on that map 1-0. In the top left it is Bian, and in the bottom right it is Nightmare. What a great weekly this has been so far. I hope not, I'm just waiting for EWC announcement qualifies for next year. So many good players, yes. Um, yeah, <laughs> we need to wait and see, I think. Thank you for tuning in, as always. And uh, yeah, it's been a great day, actually, so far on games. We had some amazing games here. Yeah? And I'm pretty sure there's going to be something in the works. I'm not sure if it's going to be actually a EWC. But... Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. So... Now we are sitting here in Nightmare Rain's Bion. I've kind of I'm kind of expecting to be there uh, eSports World Cup. It's a little bit of a shame this one this year. Um the last day we had three I think um, three games, three series, which were all 4-0 and 5-0s. Best of 7s were 4-0s, best of 9 was 5-0s. So definitely a little bit of a waste of potential there in viewership as well. Um, especially if you think about how the viewership did grow th throughout the day. I think we were hitting like 60k peak or something. And then it ended. So if we do have a longer day, with all of them being close games, we might have ended up hitting like, I don't know, maybe 100,000 views or something. Would have been a great stuff, StarCraft. But now we see a proxy Stargate here, or Starport, from Bian. And uh, earlier, Gumio did this with, with two pro uh, Cyclones. This is gonna be the Hellion variant though, from Bian here. That's a cool Adept skin. I kind of dig this one. It looks a little bit dark. Okay, so is, this might be a Liberator here. Yeah? He does have enough gas. Uh, it's gonna be a Medimek though. So, should be a drop, Hellion drop into the main. Okay, eating damage on those Hellions? That can backfire. If he loses a Hellion, you definitely need to keep those alive here. Yeah. And he's not gonna go back and repair this one. He can repair with this one SCV here. Let's see, maybe maybe he'll do it. No, he's just gonna go ahead. Timing needs to work out here. Medivac's already done. The Hellions are still not across the map, so a little bit unfortunate here for Bjorn. Tiny bit mistimed there. Now Hellions coming in. He's gonna pick up pick up all of them. Yeah, there we go. And Nightmare's not expecting this. He's completely out of position. He's just guarding his front. He's saying like, all right, you run in with Hellions, but hey, actually running into the main base. Oh my God, that's uh, that should have been actually more probes in my opinion there, but it's gonna be eight for now. Still not done yet. It's gonna drop again into the natural here. Oh, and another couple going down here, 10 probes. And the Hellions stay alive. He moves out with everything. He doesn't lose that doesn't lose anything at all. He could go back and repair. He can come in again and drop now here for the natural. It's gonna do the thing. It's gonna get some more probes. No, he definitely needs to make this this work now. now. Oh, he should go into the natural there. There was a lot of probes stacked up. He's gonna go into the main here. This is completely exposed. One, two more probes here. Maybe he can get a couple more. Gonna get one more shot here. It's gonna get one more probe. Four probes fall in the end here. So it make it 14 probes. He loses all of the Hellions and the Medivacs. Actually, like just moving out with the Hellion drop and going back home, I think would have been the greatest play you could have ever done. And then have them as mixed in as Hellbats or something later. He also did see the Dark Shrine. Did he see it though? So for now we're looking at almost 100 energy and 150 energy here. So that's three scans. There is no turrets yet though. The engineering bay is there. And we're gonna see a turret into the natural here. No DTs yet. 
This shade is going to confirm the turret, so he's going to see, all right, this is not going to be a place where I want to hit with the DT. Do you have another turret? Oh, he's just making a raven. There we go, Bian. Um, yeah, this shouldn't do anything. And Nightmare actually committing to this? I mean, after that much damage, you just go ahead and cancel that DT shrine and make Storm and throw down a third base and go super greedy, no units. I mean, he's gonna try and cancel Stim, but yeah. Beyond is just gonna say, alright, nah, I'm not gonna have any of this. Gonna throw down a scan, and now I have the Raven up and running. And yeah, the T's are gonna make an Archon. It's gonna do an Archon drop now against Terran. I mean, it weirdly enough works sometimes. I've seen this. I've seen Max Packs kill Gumiho with an Archon drop. But that was a very different game. Yeah, I don't I don't think so, Nightmare. Boom, he's gonna lose that Archon. I mean, he gets the Medivac. He loses. Wait, was there a Medivac to get? No. He only gets three Marines. Four, one Archon and one War Prism. So yeah, things are really looking grim here for our turn. Uh, it's pro's player. Adept is gonna stay alive. Charge the Zealots are on the run here. No extra base. <laughs> This is this is basically an all-in from Nightmare at this point, but without the War Prism, <laughs> even without remaking War Prism, he's just making zealots right now. Oh, sorry, he already remade the War Prism. There we go. I was looking for this one. If he can catch these two Medivacs, yeah, I'd give him a chance. Bian needs to unload. He needs to unload. Boost. Boost. Boost! God damn it, Bjorn. When he gets back to safety, Stalkers are not gonna find that low medevac. My god. And now he's behind his half wall, he's behind his double tank, he's behind his raven. He's on top of a ramp. What are you gonna do, Nightmare? Can you break him? I should have gone for the whole Mar oh, yeah. Hail Mary play and uh, throw down DT Blink and then go with like Zealot Charge and Blink DTs. And he's gonna try and push in now. He didn't manage to pull Bian out of position a little bit with the War Prism. He's dealing a lot of damage into the main base. Maybe he can. He's actually making DT Blink now. <laughs> Those SCVs definitely were misclicked there. It's a little bit unfortunate here. Bian should be mining now. He has a third base though. And uh, on the other side, there's none. The Raven is actually going to go to do some counter harassment here. It's going to throw down a couple of auto turrets. Meanwhile, the whole army is going to get demolished inside of the main base here from Pyon. So, yeah, six uh, SVs counter damage here, you know, probes, and Nightmare is just going to GG out. Yeah, I have actually a lot to say. I already talked about this earlier, but about the most watched VOD for EWC, and that being StarCraft. Um, it's actually really crazy. Because, so if you think about the StarCraft viewership, and like viewership in general for games, right? So think about, I mean, Counter-Strike, Probably very mixed, but there's also a ton of young players. Okay? League the same, Dota might be a little bit more for, uh, I mean like mid twenties or something. But um, yeah, bottom right Bian, top left Nightmare. So to to stretch this again, if you think about the viewership in general and like age viewership so just about the demographic we probably have more mid 30s viewership for starcraft right? and then you have like mid 20s probably for most of the uh, mobile games probably a little bit lower for league but the lower the viewership gets i mean um in in age 
the less potential money you can make out of those, if that makes sense. Because they don't have as much buy potential. Because they simply do not earn money. Most of those people are still living off the family and don't have an income. So most of the viewership from StarCraft, being in their 30s, mid 30s, is basically a high earning, it's a high earning viewership comparatively. So there is actually a lot of potential uh, money to be gained for, from sponsors in high demographic uh, viewerships, right? High age demographic viewership. And also, you, if you think about this, the, so all of the people who like to watch StarCraft right now, or most of them are in their 30s, mid 30s, it's a viewership that simply does ha not have that much time to watch um, or to use flexible because they are working full-time most of those people they most some of them do have a family they have children they simply do not have the flexibility to watch at any moment in time when there's a live event so there's a lot of vod watching going on in starcraft and i think that's an underestimated viewership because most people are thinking about live numbers all the time but it's a natural progress for an aging viewership to go into more VOD material and it's simply because it is there is no other option because you not cannot you just cannot sit down as a as a father for if you have like three children or whatnot you cannot just sit down for like three days and simply not do anything with your family and like it's not a thing, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's not how society works. So those people, of course, come down, come back and watch the um, yeah, VODs, right? Because they have no other options. The live option is not there for them. Because they simply don't have the time. They still love the game, they still watch it. There's still that big viewership going on. It's not live, though. I mean, the live viewership still is pretty big, don't get me wrong. Crowd-wise, actually StarCraft isn't doing terrible. Like, if we... Uh, whenever we have an event in America, the crowd is always packed. It's always... Like, there's always people standing behind the seats because we do not have enough seats. If you think about like Counter-Strike 2 or like stuff like Fortnite Battle Royales, those they have a viewership that's more in their like mid-teens. And Counter-Strike is a little Counter-Strike basically have has literally anything, but they also do have a ton of young players being in their viewership. By the way, this is a big attack here from Nightmare. Let's talk about the game a little bit. He's been taking six SCVs out of the equation already. He has gonna snipe the medivac and potentially if he can get one more shot. Oh my god. That definitely... Ooh. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. Definitely was an uh, unfortunate mistake here for Bjorn. And he feels like that shouldn't have been happened. His keyboard is uh, maybe broken. Maybe he had a lag. I'm not sure. He's probably super frustrated about this loss right now here with the medivac. Talks of Korean now. Go, go. Go, go. Three, two, one. Okay, let's go. I wonder what was going on here. Um, but yeah, Bian is making cloak right now. He's been not looking hot in this game at least. I mean, six. Army supply to 16. It's definitely a lead for our town player here. If you can catch these three stalkers right now, they don't have blink. It would be a great pickup. He's gonna lose the cyclone though, but maybe he can catch one of these, yeah, for the recoil. But now he's kind of committed with these marines. And adepts coming in here. They can one shot at those SCVs. Beyond is he gonna lose this game here? 
Nightmare doing a lot of damage. He needs to pull back with the Stalkers. Actually, only killing three SUVs, but now he can shade not into the main base. Actually, did not manage. The depot was raised fast enough. Astem is carrying SE2 content on YouTube. Yeah, him and uh, Loco and um, Winter. They're doing tons of StarCraft on YouTube. They are actually pulling insane numbers still. But yeah. And then you have several not as big StarCraft 2 channels there as well. For example, Artosis casts 2, also with a ton of StarCraft. Not as much as the other ones, but still one video per day. Please go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I wonder how much that works on YouTube with like live. Um, people watching live on YouTube. I think it doesn't actually count in there, right? I'm not sure. Bjorn is not trolling. He's he lost a ton of units here, and he's just frustrated. Not sure. I wonder what he was writing though. I can't speak Korean. Can't read it. I I was able to read it once, but I forgot all about it now. At least like pronunciation wise, even though I didn't know the meaning. Double Banshee coming in now here. Just gonna find some damage on top of these stalkers, but yeah, feedback and the other one's gonna get sniped. Both are gonna die here. Poof. A Viking. Wait, did he kill actually a War Prism? Yeah! Intercepting a War Prism here with the two Adepts. Two Adepts managed to get out, but the Prism does fall. Great stuff here from Nightmare so far. I'm going to charge and storm here. Both about to finish up. That proxy gate is still not found by Bjorn. This could come back later and actually bite the man. Coming forward with four High Templars. I think one of them is actually quite... This one did do the feedback, so he needs... He needs some more time to have a storm actually ready. That's for 25 more seconds on this one. That's a lot of time, actually. He's gonna pick up all of them into the prism, and Bjorn only has one Viking. There is no ghosts yet, so no EMPs here to counter the um, the storm. Two adept sneak in here. Can I find one worker? Maybe. No, he's not gonna focus. But this is pulling Bjorn out of position, and yeah, Nightmare is just gonna crush the front. Is he gonna crush the game? It might just be the case. The Viking is gonna try to work on that prism, but the Prism will be defended and the storm is gonna rain on top of the army nightmare. It's just gonna take the game like that. Um.